Hey folks and welcome back and in this scene I would like to take a look at rendering out our projected map painting as an image sequence. We have a somewhat finalized map painting here so there's still quite a bit of work I would need to do to get this to final but I just want to go through the process of rendering it out at this point. One of the things that I would need to spend a bit more time on is just the general animation and timing and I'm just going to stop this here. As you can see at the moment, it's playing back quite quickly. And this is over 115 frames, which is what we can see here. So that's playing back a little bit too fast. At 24 frames a second, really, that should play back across about four and a half, five seconds. So it's playing back a little bit too fast in the viewport. And that's most likely to do with my animation settings, my global animation settings. So if I come down to the little guy being chased by the big cog, and I click here, uh, it takes me into the preferences, which is under Windows, Settings and Preferences. It takes me to here, but it brings me down through this big long list down to Time Slider. And you can see that the playback speed at the moment is set to play every frame. Uh, and actually, to be able to get my timing correct, I would most likely want to set this to 24 FPS, which is a standard frame rate for film. And now if I go and press play, you can see that the animation is in fact quite a bit slower. And that's much more like four or five seconds, which is what a frame rate of 115 frames would imply. And now I would need to go and adjust all the animations to suit the new frame rate. I'm going to take a look at going straight to the rendering process. So we need to bring up our render settings. And here's our overall render settings. I'm going to put it over to Arnold Renderer. And I'm going to go to the common tab here. And this is where I set up my general outputs regardless of the renderer that i'm using so one of the things that we need to be aware of is if we're rendering out we are going to render out into the project that we have currently got set within maya so it is important that you set your project correctly so file set project and in this case it's the doll's house project so i'm going to set it here and let's go set my project and now my project is set up, so it will go out to that project and it will go into the images folder for this particular project. So at least now I know where my files will be output to. If I don't set that correctly, uh, most likely it will get dumped out somewhere like your documents. The next thing I need to look at then is my overall naming for this particular sequence. You can see that I've just written an explosion here because I just added the explosion effect. So I should probably rename this to something a little mo bit more descriptive. So I'm going to call it Doll's House. And when I hit, hit enter here, you can see that it updates the file name. After the file name, you can see that we have these four numbers here. And these represent the frames that we're going to render out onto disk. So we're going to be rendering out an image sequence. And if you haven't done a lot of digital media stuff before, you're possibly more used to MOVs and AVIs. But when we render out generally from CG, we render one frame after another after another. And we bring those over to a compositing package and that could be Nuke or After Effects or whatever. We would do our edits in our compositor and we would render out to MOV or AVI or wherever it needs to go for digital out. We're going to render out as an image sequence from Arnold and then we can look at turning it into an AVI. So the image format I'm going to use is PNG. Often we would use EXR. Or TIFF, but I'm just going to put it out as a PNG for now. And you can see PNG just up here. Now, by default, Maya will probably be set to name and then single frame. And that means that you'll just render out a single image. And that's not what I want to do in this case. I want to render out an image sequence. So I need to change frame slash animation extension to name.hash.extension. Okay. And that takes the file name here and then a number that's what the hash represents and then the extension which is png in this case so this little, next little one here is to do with frame padding and that's how many digits i'm going to have in my numbering frame padding refers to the number of digits that i'm going to get for the frame numbers at the end of my file name and you can see by default here it is set to four uh, if i put it down to one for example you can see i'm just getting one number here uh, and if you've not worked a lot with digital media, this can seem a little bit strange and you might not think that this is particularly important. But it is something you need to be aware of. 
if we have only one digit in our numbering here the problem is is that my o will render out frame one two three four five six seven eight and nine and when it gets to ten well it's only got one digit to use so you would expect that it would name it file name dot number 10 dot tiff or jpeg or png but in fact it will just name it number one and it will keep going through this sequence if you had 100 frames to render it would just keep running over these numbers again and again similar problem if we had a frame padding of two we would get to frame 99 it would go to render frame 100 here and it would render frame 10 and over and over again so the best solution to this is just use for frame padding and that means that you'll only run into issues if you have to render 9999 frames uh, which is very unlikely that you'll be doing that okay so i'm going to put it to a frame padding of four just here double check your frame range i'm rendering from uh frame one to frame 115 so that's perfectly fine for me by default that is set to one to ten so you will need to double check that one double check that you're picking up your render camera you will have a projection camera in your scene you might have more than one so you will need to double check that one and then you can go and check your image size and the image size for this project should be hd 1080 which is 1920 by 1080 pixels okay and that is all of our settings done on our common tab before i go and render things out i want to make sure that my render time is is pretty quick arnold by default is expecting to be rendering lights and shaders and things like that all of our lighting is in our digital matte painting so i can turn everything down if I was to press play just on the Arnold render view here, you can see that it's going through and it's trying to render and it takes, you know, a couple of seconds to do the first pass and that will go through and do a second one. Uh, and I don't want to have to wait all that length of time for this thing to render. So in fact, what I can do is I can take the camera AA samples here and I can just drive them all the way down and I'll just put it at one just so we get some samples and I'll put diffuse at zero and specular at zero. And now you can see it's rendering much, much quicker. If I want to get a feel for how quickly it's, it's rendering, I can just hit the little button down here and that will save a snapshot of my render. And you can see it's taking two seconds here. And now you can see it is rendering quite quickly. So I can just move through the frames here and you can see it resolves very, very fast, right? Um, it's not quite real time. It is taking a second to go through and sample it. But you know, it's going to render the entire sequence in a few minutes because my samples are low. Now, if I was adding lights to my scene and I was going to do things like depth of field and things like that, then I would need to go back in and start adjusting these correctly. But for my projected map painting, this should be fine. So with that set up, let's take a go at rendering this guy out. So I need to go and render it out as a sequence. So I'm gonna put it over to the renderer context here. I'll go to render. Uh, I'm gonna use render sequence. Now, sometimes you'll see tutorials that use batch render, Batch render is useful if you want to render out on another machine, uh, such as a render farm. Using batch render in this case will get me a watermark. So I'm going to use render sequence instead, which will do the same thing. It will render out the entire sequence for me, but it is going to hold up this machine. Okay, so I will need to go away and get a coffee or a cup of tea while it renders out. When this little window pops up, I just hit the option box there. I just want to make sure that it has picked out the right camera for me and we're pretty much good to go so just one last thing i'm going to do before i hit render sequence i'm just going to close these guys down out of my way it's generally a good idea to open your script editor and the script editor will just print out information about which current frame is being rendered so it's just a good idea to give you an idea of where the overall renders are at to open this up before you hit render so i'm going to open up this guy just here and i'm just going to make it a little bit bigger and you can see there's a whole lot of stuff up here at the top. I'm just going to clear all that out. And I'm going to hit render sequence. Now it's going to pull up this window. And this is the default Arnold render view window. And you can see here on the script editor, it is rendering frame one of 115. And it is putting that one out onto disk. Now your machine will start to slow down pretty dramatically while it's rendering. It's probably going to eat up all of the CPU. So I'm going to just stop this video now while it renders out. And here they are in Finder on a Mac. I was checking them as they were rendering out just to make sure that everything was going okay. And then I went away and got a cup of tea. 
And, you know, it didn't take very long to render out because we put all the settings down though. Now I have this image sequence and the process that I would normally go through would be to bring it over into After Effects or Nuke and I could do adjustments over there, add some audio, add any other extra effects, etc. But in this case, I'm just going to take the image sequence and put it out as a mov. And I'm going to use Adobe Media Encoder to do that. And Adobe Media Encoder is a very simple piece of software to use. You need to add your media to this section over here, and then you can pick the presets that you want in this section over here, and then you just render it. So I'm just going to go and add my image sequence. And into my doll's house project here and into the images folder and here we go so i can shift select a lot of those now it has picked up that it is a file sequence here i've just opened up the options and you can see it's a sequence range from 1 to 115 so that looks good hit open it's going to bring all of those in and i'm just going to make sure that it is h.264 over here which is the codec format and then I'm going to go and set it to render out to HD, which is 1080p. I'm just going to use the Vimeo setting here, but you can see there's lots of different ones for lots of mobile devices, different social media platforms. And that's really what Adobe Media Coder is for putting out footage to different output platforms. I'm just going to use this one in this case. And I'm just going to hit render here. It's the little play icon here in the top right. And it will put it out to the same folder that the input footage came from. And you can see it renders out very, very quickly. And if I jump back over to Finder now, and here it is right here, and that is how I can take my rendered image sequence. And that is how I can take my final image sequence and put it out as a mov. So in this section, we looked at setting up our common render settings and ensuring that our file naming made some kind of sense. We double checked our camera was the correct one. We double checked our frame range was correct. We lowered our render settings, we rendered it out using render sequence, and then we used Adobe Media Encoder to turn it into a MOV. Now you don't necessarily need to use Adobe Media Encoder, you could use Premiere or After Effects or any other compositing or video piece of software should do that job for you.